welcome to our show Dreams, Passion and Your Hong Kong Story. Every time on this show, we bring before you people from different walks of life who have pursued their passion and found great success in Hong Kong. Today, we have with us a very dynamic and versatile finance professional, Sachil Dagar. Hello Sachil and welcome to our show. Hi. Good evening. Yeah. Thank you very much. Sachin has been a commercial banker for nearly 26 years now and he's had varied experiences in India, Hong Kong and Singapore. He's currently the CEO of Hubby Bank Zurich Limited for its Hong Kong operations. So Sachin, tell us a little bit about how and when you decided to become a banker. Uh, was it from very early on in life or did it come later? What, tell us something about your early childhood. Okay, so uh, banker was uh, the last thing I would have had on my mind. Really? My dad was in army. I studied in a military school. Oh. And the only thing that I knew ever was uh, joining army, uh, getting through NDA from straight from school. Uh, that was the theme. And, um, and joining Indian army, right? Because yes, you're from yes. India. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And uh, I studied in Melgaon. It's a military school set up by Britishers. Uh, there ah. are five such schools in India. Uh, okay. So that's all we knew. Uh, Army, uh, so much so that we never tried for any medical engineering or any such thing. So it was just the thought that you probably once you're out of uh, school, you're going to get into the uh, NDA or something. That didn't happen. Okay. Uh, suddenly, I didn't know what to do. And we somehow managed to get a graduation done. And immediately after graduation, again, I went for IMA. Okay. Uh, got through there. Uh, came 12th in the All India Merit. Yeah. And uh, then the doctor said, no, you have some cardiac murmur, uh, some mitral valve pr prolapse, as they call it. So suddenly, uh, the whole thing collapsed. Uh, okay. All your years of you know, being an army officer uh, yeah. just collapsed. My classmates were getting through. So I have got classmates who are now brigadiers in army and wow. uh, they're doing very well for themselves and uh, it was for me it was just giving up giving exams and getting through and then suddenly uh, you had to take a decision so whether now you had always thought of worthy and uh, you know the dress and right. uniform uh, disciplined life then the whole thought process dug in deep I have to take a call where do I want to be yeah. uh, banking I chose okay perfect so banking was the destination finally I know you uh, worked at Axis Bank in India, which is a very prestigious bank at all the different branches. Yeah. You rose through the ranks very quickly in life. Yeah. You became the CEO of their Singapore and their Hong Kong offices. So how was it to work as a CEO of the foreign subsidiary of an Indian bank in Singapore and Hong Kong? Was, it very, was your India experience very valuable there? Uh, yes and no. Uh, the India experience made a banker out of you, okay. uh, whereas this was international banking. So it was, in in lot of sense, a bit different uh, okay. because while I was more of a corporate banker back in India, uh, corporate and SME is what I had been uh, doing. But this was more international and then what you thought is like the end all be all of corporate banking, you realize that that's the foundation of what you do thereafter. Yeah. So uh, we got into... Uh, you know, uh, selling assets uh, more out of Singapore, trade assets and corporate assets, bonds and everything. Okay. And so, then you moved with access to Hong Kong? Uh, f first I was in Singapore. Okay. I, I moved from uh, Delhi to uh, Singapore. Singapore and from Singapore I moved to Hong Kong. Okay. And then was there a difference of the jobs that kind of, kind of the deals that you were doing between Singapore or Hong Kong? Or not not much, not much. It was okay. just that Hong Kong was a little bigger book and was doing even retail. So, okay. Yeah. So, but not, not in a very large scale. Tell us, do you think, like, so how long have you been in Hong Kong now? Two years? I Hong think? Kong? No, no, it's, it's uh, four and a half years now. Four and a half years? Yeah. Wow. So how is it, how is Hong Kong, uh, f you know, working in Hong Kong for a banker? I mean, what are the pros and the cons of a banker who moves in from another country, gets an experience in banking in a place like Hong Kong? How advantageous is it? You see, uh, both Singapore and Hong Kong are very, very mature financial markets. Mm -hmm. So what it does, when you say mature, means the first thing that you have is amazing platforms, skill sets, okay. uh, the whole atmosphere, yeah. the whole the whole range of services that you can get. So when you say a banker today, uh, a banker means so many things today. I mean, yes, two bankers will not be able to communicate with each other in, in, in what they do 
uh, through the day. Uh, micro specialization has become a very, very big thing uh, today in banking. Okay. And these markets, they offer all those platforms which will not be available in a, in a markets which are not mature. Okay. So you could find a bit of it in, if you talk, talk in terms of India, you could find it in Bombay, a bit of it, but not many other places. Okay. So straight up what these places offer is this huge platform of, you know, what possibilities uh, exist. Okay. Uh, you moved with Axis to Hong Kong, worked here for a few years with them, and then about two years ago, you've joined an international bank, which is Habib Bank. So how is working with Habib different uh, from, uh, as compared to working with Axis? And uh, tell us uh, the difference. Do you feel any difference or it's similar? No, there's, there, there's, a bit, there's a quite a bit of difference, and yet uh, there are some uh, similarities. Uh -huh. uh, the biggest differences, of course, are in the size. Um, okay. Axis Bank... Um, Though Axis Bank came in much later, but mm -hmm. it, the whole growth story there has been phenomenal and it's okay. part of the India story. Yes. It came in the time when India was growing. So it, it just, uh, sh you know, kind of uh, never stopped. It continues to grow at a, a crazy pace. Mm -hmm. uh, when I joined the bank, uh, I was employee number 380. In oh. Axis? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So I used to call myself one of the dinosaurs in the system. So, wow. when, so when I left, probably I would be amongst the top 30, 40 oldest guys in the system. Wow. See, Habib Bank uh, Zurich, HBZ mm -hmm. as it is called in short, uh, has been in uh, Hong Kong for about 40 years. It's a family-owned bank okay. uh, and, uh, and because it's a family-owned bank, the whole culture is totally different. I mean, mm. for me, in, in that sense, it's a huge movement from uh, access to this place. Yeah, a movement where from access nationalized is to private Indian bank from there to a family yes, yes. international it's, bank. It's, it's a very interesting wow. move. Okay. But, but one thing that I found, a very common uh, thread that I found between Axis and uh, Habib Bank Zurich yeah. was the people orientation. Axis okay. amongst all the banks in India yeah. uh, is seen as some more of a people friend. Unfortunately, that's changing a bit as the bank has grown into Growing size in. and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, various rounds of leaderships have come in. So it kind of breaks the original chain of uh, the right. personal touch. But it's still one of the most personal uh, oriented kind of a bank in uh, India. This bank is all about that. Okay. So family is a key word here. Uh -huh. People, you know, are taken care of. There are stories of people who were, who were taken care of till the very end yeah. of their life. Uh -huh. Even now, uh, people don't retire in a way from here. Okay. Um, often, most of. So it, that is the kind of culture. So that should tell you one thing. And then the second part of this whole uh, institution is that it's trade. So that the is, trade sorry, finance. Trade so finance. the group knows okay. trade finance. Okay. And that's all they do. Okay. So basically, you raise deposits and you get into trade finance. Trade finance. Okay. And tra and in Hong Kong, uh, the the unique thing that we would have compared to any other bank here. I mean, the large banks do everything. So you they they are nowhere in the competition. There yes. there would be very very few, if at all, any bank which does only trade finance for SMEs. Oh, so you so specialize, the, you focus on SMEs. Yes, yes. And trade finance. Okay. And, and which, which is a very, which has been a very profitable business uh, for the group. It's not expanded uh, like uh, into a mega bank, but yes. it has stayed profitable through its years of okay. um, 40 uh, plus years in Hong Kong. Uh -huh. And uh, the fact that it's never made losses. I see. Again, tells you something about it. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it Lehman crisis or any other crisis, while while banks were swinging, this bank had a very steady uh, space. So not so. What comes in here is not ultra aggressive, uh, no no super ambitions. Mm -hmm. uh, being a you know family owned institution mm -hmm. also allows you to not chase the uh, stock market valuations. Right, right. You know, one difference between you know one I I wouldn't even call a difference. One pain that most of the world has mm -hmm. is the market valuation game. Yes. Which makes people take risk, which takes professional makes professionals take risk beyond yes. what is required, yes. and then then ultimately create problems. Okay. More often than than not, this is what we see every time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it could culminate in the organization itself collapsing, or or something very nasty happening. Um, right. Yeah. So the so the unique selling point of Habib is it's focused on trade finance, it's focused on small and medium enterprises, and it's family Kong, oriented, and it's yeah. very family oriented. All right, and so. so uh, is there any challenge do you think this uh, this system can also face in a market like hong kong the uh, challenges for chal yeah the challenges for an institution like us would be uh, the size of, would always remain uh, a okay. uh, scare uh, okay. because if you don't grow uh, it's always a challenge i see uh, but so far uh, it's maintained its niche and okay. it's been delivering in that space okay. the loyalty with the clients similarly even customers many of them are there with us from the beginning so 
we may not be the uh, most digitally advanced bank, we may not be the modern banks or the scale that others can give in, but there's something that human or personal touch that, that we provide right. that enables people to kind of hang on uh, with okay. us. Yeah. So what has fascinated me about you, uh, I know you also as a friend, and you know, I'm always impressed that you are not just a banker uh, focusing on your work, but you was just so versatile. I mean, you know, you're a great singer, you dance so well, you are so good in photography, you are a fitness enthusiast, people always find you running on so many trails in Hong Kong, you write poems. So how did you get all that? I mean, were you always so versatile or did you keep reinventing yourself at different stages of your life? Um, I, I think the second part, reinventing would be the right word because I remember being known as a man with two left feet. I mean, I'm, it was my younger brother who would do all the dancing in every function. I was the guy who would just clap on the side. Really? And it was like, if I do... That's hard to believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... Because I have myself <laughs> seen you on the dance floor. That's really hard to no, believe. Yeah, till <laughs> as, as, as I remember very clearly, the first time I started feeling the dance was when I was almost 25. Wow. Then suddenly I felt that I could dance. And this is Bollywood dancing <laughs> and it is not easy to do that. And the way you shake on the dance floor, we've all seen it. Amazing. But what about your poetic skills? Did you always have that? Because you write beautiful poems. So that comes from, um, uh, you know, uh, I have always been uh, very fond of language, both Hindi and English. Okay. Uh, and... Uh, it's been very extreme reading that I've done in both. So, so and then I've, uh, fortunately for me, I remember uh, things. I, so every poem that I ever read in school. Okay. So the amount I remembered then is the amount I remember it now. Okay. So if I didn't know the full poem then, I don't know the full poem now. But if wow. I knew the four paragraphs, you or the four, I would that? still remember the four poems. So, wow. so uh, then wordplay has been something which is uh, one of my favorites. I mean, even games, or word games and whatever. So but I am very happy playing with words. And you're also very good at mimicry, right? You just, uh, I remember you telling me that you can just copy the sounds of different animals and how, how did you get that? Is that very natural? Like I, I would say copy? it must be natural because when I just, there was one day I was, uh, there were some dogs and I started to bark and they started barking back and then I Whoa. realized, okay, I can probably communicate with them. <laughs> <laughs> and so how has Hong Kong been for your personal journey? For your family, for your kids? Um... My kids love the schools uh, the very first day they went to the school. So that is, for, as a parent, uh, the biggest challenge when you move from, and, and like I said, we moved from Singapore, which yes. is already on the highest standards in the world. And to move from there, and then on the very first day they go to school, they're happy, they're enjoying, they're suddenly I'm fine. Uh, I stay in Pok Fulam, amazing views, uh, amazing place. Uh, you can walk around, run around. Um, it's it's sensational. I mean, for us to you know find living in Hong Kong has been is mind blowing. So, I'm totally in love with Hong Kong. Okay. All right. So, are you ready for a rapid fire question round? That is getting to know Sachil's. Hong Kong's journey in a bit more fun way. Okay, let's right. go. So, your favorite casual dining place in Hong Kong? Favorite casual dining place? Um, it's cuisine wise. If for Thai, it's a Chili Club, okay. and uh, for Chinese, it's uh, House of Chi. Okay, I love House of Chi. Mm. Yes, for Sichuan food. Yeah. Uh, your favorite formal dining place in Hong Kong? Formal dining. And the club restaurant in KCC is very nice. Really? Yeah. KCC stands for Kowloon yeah, Cricket Club? Cricket Club, yeah. Okay, yeah. so the club yeah, restaurant there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, I, I really love it. Such the... as best way to have fr uh, fun with friends and family in Hong Kong? <laughs> I think most of my friends will recognize that. A beer in hand, uh, okay. nice music and dance. All right. <laughs> On a romantic date in Hong Kong, I'm going to give you a few options. You're going to pick up one. What would you like to do? You would like to go on a hike on the Hong Kong mountains? You would like to go on a beach and have a drink or, uh, or pick up some food on, let's say, in Lama Island or in Repals Bay? Or you would like to go out for a fine dining dinner? So if, if I were to remember the most romantic moments, uh, it was actually on the peak. We had gone on in a stormy evening and uh, there was like... Uh, beautiful views. Uh, okay. There was, you know, clouds all around. Uh, it, it was magical. Me and my wife Abha were there. And your solitary activity in Hong Kong? Something like you like to do by yourself? 
I can just run for hours. So that's, really? that's a way of spending time. Wow. <laughs> for me. Run for hours. So yeah, so I, I try to bring in more discipline in terms of fitness and all when my family is not here. Yes. Um, you have a little bit of that time and I put into these things. And then, then I organize things. I love organizing uh, things. Organizing. Yeah, organizing just, just how my clothes are kept, how my files wow. are kept, how my, my photos are kept in the computer. Wow. So, I mean, last two days, um, probably I would have spent more than 14, 15 hours organizing. So Sachin photos. loves to organize. Another example of your discipline. <laughs> Probably, yeah, it comes yes, it, it, uh, yes, right? it does. Because uh, again, you know, some of the there are always some defining thoughts in your mind. Right. So my defining thought was, uh, if there's no light in the house, I should get my blue T-shirt uh, without searching for it. Wow. So it has to be there where it has, has to You're be. You're an interesting man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, three words that describes your Hong Kong life, or three sentences that will describe you. Three sentences. Uh, Amazing uh, topography, okay. uh, amazing people, amazing weather, amazing, amazing weather. Weather. and okay. and great views from anywhere in the city. Okay, what what would you tell the business leaders around the world? Why should they engage with Hong Kong? You see, um, like I said, the best place to it's got the best talent okay. in every field: banking, law, logistics. So, the talent pool, uh, the legal framework. Uh, which is one of the finest in the world, the safety, security, okay. uh, not standing what you have seen in the last few uh, months. Even through that, it's still the safest place, uh, amongst the safest in the world. And then, of course, uh, access to one of the biggest markets in the world. Okay. And this market is not going down anywhere soon. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Sachin, for being on our show. And good luck with all your future endeavors. Thank you so much. Pleasure being here. Stay tuned for our next episode on dreams, passion and your Hong Kong story where we shall be bringing you yet another fascinating story from this wonderful place, Hong Kong.